Well, hey guys, and welcome to another edition of The Point Podcast. I want to tell you thank you so much for tuning in. And today I have a very special guest. This is Evan Pittman. And if you've been taking part in the Blindsided series for the past few weeks, you know that we've been talking about how we're blindsided in life, not, not if, but when. And I want to finish this, this series with Evan this morning. Evan, I'll tell you, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Pastor. And uh, Evan got blindsided years ago and got addicted to pornography. Uh, Evan, you've been coming to Five Point for how long? Since around 2019, so maybe five, four years, something like four that. Four or five years, okay. And when when did you begin to get into pornography? How far back does that take you? So as early as I can remember, I was around sixth grade age, whatever that is. Really that early? Um, I want to say maybe as early as 10 or 11. How did you, at that young, how did you get to it? So um, going into middle school, I've I heard other people talking about it in school and things like that, and I just... Just got curious as our brains are designed to do, and um, I found it on my um, my dad had a computer in his basement mm-hmm. for for work purposes, and um, I just snuck down there one day and searched it, and there it was. And from that point on, it was it was a problem for me. Once you saw it, how how did it grow? How, how did you become more want more and more of it? So. I guess just based on the brain aspect of things, it was it, it became addicting instantly, and um, it so was that fast. You just wanted it every day, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Um, at first, it was it was kind of weird, obviously, but the more I viewed it, the less weirder it got. And at that point, it, I just became numb to it, and it was it was it was something that I didn't want to do, but I always went back to it. So all through high school, you are looking at porn on a. Daily basis? Mm-hmm. Daily. Daily basis. Hey, a very serious question that I hope men will listen to. How did this affect the way you looked at women? Oh, in a very, very negative way. Um, not only porn itself, uh, sexual, um, any type of sexual Intimacy. issues. You look at somebody, and especially a female, the wrong way. That. Straight to that. Yes. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was disgusting. I knew it was wrong. But I was so deep in my addiction that I was just numb to it, and it didn't affect me. All right. Now, now what's your wife saying? Mary. And how long have you and Mary been married? Almost 10 years. 10 years. So, obviously, as you're going into your marriage, you're still looking at porn. Yep. How did that affect your your sex life, the intimacy with Mary? So, um, I brought it into my marriage, and obviously, she didn't know anything about it until... I want to say not even a couple months into our marriage, she found it on my phone. Oh, and um, that was that was hard, um, but as time went on, I'm not trying to get ahead of the story, but things just a lot of trust was broken, sure. um, and just along those lines. Um, How did it make I, Mary? Because I know so many husbands are scared to come forward with this addiction because they are scared to death what their wives are going to feel. Sure. How, how did Mary feel with this? Oh, she was devastated because my problem was the lies. I would lie to her just to protect her. I thought she would be protected by me not saying, you know, I didn't. I did not view anything today, and she could sense when something was wrong and when I did view because of my actions. And um, so, how did she, she could, respond? Like when she found out that first day, how did Mary respond? Oh, she was, she was devastated. She was clearly upset, rightfully so. Sure. So, uh, so many times. Uh, Dealing with husbands, the wives look at the husband now as disgusting, mm-hmm. and and yep. the lack of faith, the lack of trust, uh, and, and I've seen pornography itself literally split marriages. Right, and and they're what they said they never did have an affair except with the computer. Right, and and that in itself. All right, so as you're getting deeper into this, and Mary finds out, I, it didn't just go away. No. So how did you? Get from, okay, my wife has caught me. How do I get out of this thing? So it went on. That that went on a lot longer than it should have gone until I finally seeked out therapy and counseling. Um, they gave me tools to to deal with that and what to do if a relapse occurs. Um, but it had gotten ba- so bad, um, I continued to lie even after that and um, cover up. I got to the point where she had kicked me out of the house and I was staying in a hotel. Wow. And that was probably my lowest 
because I'd been kicked out of the house before, even before this time, and I knew at that moment this is it. I'm about to lose her. She was done. To, she was done. And um, yeah, I just I thought it was it. I was not expecting to come home, but um, by God's grace, she she told me later on that he told her to for me to come back home. All right, you're in that motel by yourself without your wife, about to lose everything. So what made you just begin to change? So at that point forward, um, I began reading my Bible. Um, and there's and, and when you tell people every day or every Sunday to read their Bible, it's it's for a reason, and I take that with a grain of salt. I make sure that I try to read my Bible every day. I don't read it every day like I should. I, I'll be honest, but when you are in the Word and you're doing some type of devotional, it it changes you. It changes you. So. You should begin to read the Bible, okay? You know, I know a lot of guys, it may sound weird, but they read their Bible, and then they look at porn. Mm -hmm. The two don't go hand in hand, but, right. but, but they, they do. Yeah. So, so okay, you start reading your Bible, but still ain't going to get you out of porn. No. What, keep going. No. How, how did you get out of this addiction? So we had, after the second time that I was kicked out, um, focus on the family, um, what we went through, focus on the family held an intensive marriage counseling in, at Berry College. And we went to that, and that was probably my turning point because they gave us certain tools on how to communicate with our wife in case of a relapse. And um, the exercises that we did in that class um, really helped me gain my trust back with Mary. But um, even when we got back home, you know, life happens. We, we get back into the normal everyday thing, and we get complacent and – at that point forward, anytime I did have some type of relapse, I was able to go to her. Well, did you begin her. another type of therapy, or so I? So you came home, you're reading your Bible, but still, that addiction's real, right? Just reading the Bible itself is is good, but it's not, you know, gonna like you said, take the porn away. So I surrounded myself with some men in the church that I knew from small group. Very well. Very um, I actually um, one of the first small groups that I attended from Five Point. Ended up finding out that all of us guys had the same issue, and we had accountability. And um, I recommend Covenant Eyes. Covenant Eyes is a program that I've used. We installed can, on your computer, right, and on phones, tablets, things like that. But um, no, it, it, okay, because yeah. a lot of people don't know. Explain exactly what Covenant Eye does. Covenant Eyes basically what that does is you can set it up either on your accountability partner's phone, like a, like a friend or a pastor. And Life. Any, yeah, and um, they will be able. There will be certain screenshots that the phone will be able to take when you're on your phone, and will send that. It'll to email them you to them, the yes. correct? So, um, luckily, I'm at that point where I don't need it anymore. Praise God! But um, it's something that I would recommend people having on their phones. Yes, yes. So here's the thing about accountability, and I, I like accountability, uh, accountability. But but so many times, accountability has a lot to just to do with yourself. Right. I've had some guys before. All right, let's lose weight. All right, so we start holding each other accountable. So you call that. Now, how'd you do eating today? Man, I did great after you just hammered a pack of double stuff Oreos. Yeah. You know, so, so accountability is only as good as you're willing to be truthful. And, you, and, and when it comes to this type of issue and topic, you have to reach a certain point where this is it. Like, you have to reach rock bottom. Rock bottom, yep. And um, it's something that most men don't want to talk about because I was in their shoes. I didn't want to discuss this with anybody. I was hesitant talking to a therapist about course, it, even though they were there for that. How much shame and guilt, especially after you got married, you're in church, were you feeling as you were going through these daily addictions to this pornography? I was just going through the motions of and making church basically a checklist for the yep, week. It's good. And... Um, it was just a checklist going through the motions, and there was no radical love relationship with Christ. No, like I could, I could come in on Sunday and there would be a good sermon given, and I'll be like, okay, perfect, I'm going to conquer this, I'm done with this, and then not even 24 hours later, I'm viewing again. Sure. So it's a hard issue, and it's something that men or women that are struggling with this need to discuss and talk to somebody about. Because statistics prove uh, that 70. Or that seventy percent of men who attend the American church, seventy percent, mm -hmm. either dabble, look at, or are addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. And so, as you think about that staggering statistic, I've dealt with some men that they'll tell me, 
what's the big deal? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I go home. It's just me in my house. I'm not hurting anybody. What would you say to somebody that literally, I think, says it? I'm not even sure if they believe it, but there's other guys I do. They, they believe that. Mm-hmm. I don't think they think of the long-term aspect of consequences that comes with it. I would ask them, what would your wife think it's good. that you're viewing this? What would what would God think? What would your mom and dad think? It, it goes it goes deep. To me, when I reached the point of redemption and being free from this, I looked at porn at a, in a different set of eyes, I guess you would say, because that's somebody's daughter. That's very well said. That's somebody's family member. That's somebody's mom. How would you like someone looking at your daughter, right. doing that to your daughter? Yeah. And that is God's daughter. And most, most of those people that are performing in those videos don't want to be there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 They're it's, they're there for a reason to pay some type of bills they're behind or sex slave or, trade. Or sex slave trade. They're being forced to be there. I've heard stories of those women escaping and then they're drugged back into it. So it's it's a sick industry and it's a sick world. And um I think people need to know about that. It's not talked about enough in the church. We last last Sunday talked about addictions at Five Point Church. And we didn't talk just about pornography. We talked about addiction, period, from from cigarettes to alcohol to food to the Internet, social media to, to whatever. And one of the big things I really wanted to push was if we're ever going to free ourselves from an addiction, we got to come to the point that we want to do it out of a love for Christ just as much as we want to do it for ourselves or our loved ones. Mm-hmm. And, and if anyone's listening that has a problem, not with just pornography but any addiction, you've got to come to a point. The Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, convicts you to the point that you say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to break this addiction. Evan, because he's been through this, and I don't know why. I've got my issues. I've got my problems. It's never been a problem for me. I've never gone to a computer and typed in a sex word and it come up. That's just something God's protected me from. And I knew where it would take you. So it literally scared me. But Evan has begun a class on Tuesday nights at 630 and he is, what, what uh, curriculum are you using? Uh, Pure Desire Ministries. It, it's, it's, it's very good. Very good. And, and he's walking men through how to get out of this addiction. I'd encourage you, please, if you're having a problem with pornography, if you've just started dabbling in it, please be at Five Point Tuesday night at 630. And allow Evan to begin to walk you through it if you're a man. And then Evan's wife, Mary has begun to do the same for women. I can't encourage you enough to get into this. Evan, what would you say to somebody that's thinking, yeah, I really need to do that? Man, what if someone finds out? Or what, 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 how would you respond to that? This class is completely confidential. Anything that is shared in the group, I told them last night, you know, nothing goes beyond these walls. I told them not not even going home and telling my wife, right, right, your stories. Um, I know that the first big step is coming to a group like this or some some type just of counseling and just admitting it and mm-hmm. talking about it. That's the first biggest step. Mm-hmm. And um, and if you and I understand some men are not comfortable doing that in person yet. And I was there. Um, Pure Desire they do offer online counseling as well and online groups. You can go to puredesireministries.org. They have that online as well for you if you want to go that route as well. After you admit it. You got to come to a point where you're willing to truly not just not admit to yourself, but then confess it. Right. Uh, James five sixteen says clearly you have to confess to one another. Let me encourage you to quit trying to conceal this. Now, be careful who you confess it to. It's got to be someone you love and trust dearly. But concealing it is not going to defeat yep. this thing. Yep. And God has to be in the center of it all. Right. When you begin to read your Bible and begin to worship, the Holy Spirit can defeat that counterfeit spirit that Satan has put into your brain that this is okay, because it's not. Right. You've got to begin to spend more time with God and feed the spirit than you do the flesh. Right. Well, Evan, man, I'm excited about us trying to step into this world of addiction, to pornography, and I appreciate you being willing to step up and say, man, this is a problem. But by the grace of God, it's been defeated. And I just want to help other people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as, as you move forward, what are some things that you've done to make sure you don't get back into this again? 
So um, one of the biggest things um, that me and my wife had discussed was um, it's, it could be something simple as, and it's, it's, it sounds simple, but it's actually a huge step, not even taking your cell phone into the bathroom with you. Mm, that's a good, well, that's a good that word. Was, that, was my, that was my biggest issue. That would be my getaway is the bathroom. And um, I still do it to this day. I don't take my bathroom or my phone into the bathroom for respect to my wife. Sure. And her and, and her mindset. So it's just setting up those boundaries and um, the class that we're teaching later on when we get deeper into the class, it teaches about that and what you can do. But um, it's just about setting up those boundaries, things like that. Um, things you watch on TV. Yeah. Sit down and have a conversation with your spouse see what and see what they would do and act on it. So good. Well, man, again, thank you. If you're struggling in this area, please, we'd love to be able to reach out and try to help you because this is real and it's affecting a lot of lives. What's the point? Man, you got to get out of addictions, whatever they are, and get addicted to Jesus Christ because he's the only thing that we need to be addicted to. Until next time. <laughs>